there's, so there's an important concept that is very helpful if you are going to study mindfulness and meditation, and that is uh, terminology. We look to oftentimes either the history of a word to find its lineage, to find its original intent maybe when created or close thereto, or how a different culture used that word, um, or what their lineage was or we look um, internally in our body to sit with, does that definition of that word feel right to me? We run it against our own internal knowledge bank and, and we see what that word really means because it, interpretation and language is an important factor in this process. Another way to look at this is, it was described in this way from one of my uh, meditation uh, teachers was that there's a right way, there's a right word, or a right way, or a right interpretation. Um, and I hate to say right and wrong, da, 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 but there is a way, for example, the word sin, we use it today to be something totally different than it was intended to be. We use the word today, sin, as something that invokes like, oh, I did something wrong and I'm shameful and that's so you sinned, you're a sinner, you're a sinner. Um, but really the word sin, originally meant to that you missed the mark now boy isn't that a difference <laughs> of 180 degrees of like oh i missed the mark so yeah i could have sinned that's okay it's i missed the mark okay so the word i want to talk to you about today is um and the way that i feel like you could use it in the right way versus the way we use it is we have blind faith it's the word faith, and we practice faith in a kind of a blind, half faith, haphazardly way. And we know intuitively there's something important to the component of faith or to that word or to that tenet or to that idea of faith, but we don't, you know, quite, the way it's given, it's like blind faith. You have faith, which means oftentimes you um, doubt even logic or you doubt things that you even are running through that you're like that doesn't seem right to me but you know what whatever you're supposed to have faith okay so the way another one of my meditation uh, teachers described this how to look at this process of having faith in this process that you are learning that you are growing that you are on the right path because that's what you want is faith to know that is really is instead of thinking of it in terms of fate, think of it in, in terms of trust and doubt. We should always doubt the process, doubt our teachers, doubt, like have a little bit of skepticism, like run this against your internal inquiry and compass and your common sense and go, does this concept or this idea or this philosophy or this practice seem to make sense? So we doubt it, like run it up against things, but, and have, and we get inquisitive about it, you know? And then the other component of that is uh, trust, though, that you're on the right path. Because we get doubts about, we always get those doubts in our head, am I doing this right? That's one of the biggest things that stops people from meditating, um, I think, or, um, they're just curious at first a lot of times that comes up even in my practice um, I have those little doubts in my head like am I doing this right am I doing this right so I, and then I have to say oh that's silly that's your silly negativity bias mind that's evolved over time and you just trust that you're on the right path because you know you're on the right path because you're also inquiring and being inquisitive and doubting a little bit and saying oh okay and this is like how he described it, two wings of a bird or a dove, like you can't fly one without the other, so trust and doubt. And then you'll have faith, you're going to get there. <laughs> but it's not blind faith. So, thanks for joining me today, you guys. Namaste.